Um, we will hear from Dr. Tiffany Powell Wiley. Dr. Powell Wiley is an Earl Stedman tenure track investigator with a joint appointment in the cardiovascular branch of the Division of Intramural Research at the National Heart Lung Blood Institute and the Intramural Research Program of the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Powell Wiley. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here today. Can you hear me okay? So I'll be uh, talking about the intersection of policy and system science modeling um, and uh, thinking about social determinants of physical activity and obesity. These are my disclosures. As we know, obesity and diabetes uh, relate to premature cardiovascular mortality. As I said, I'll be talking about how uh, policy and system science modeling intersect um, in examining our social determinants of uh, physical activity and obesity. These are my disclosures. So uh, as we know, obesity and diabetes uh, both relate to uh, premature cardiovascular mortality in the U.S. And we also know that non-Hispanic Black uh, populations are disproportionately affected. So as I said, uh, non-Hispanic uh, Black populations are disproportionately affected by um, obesity and diabetes, as well as premature cardiovascular mortality. And so the question becomes, next slide, please. How do we address these disparities for at-risk uh, Black populations? Next slide. So if we think about the development of interventions from a multi-level standpoint, we really think about using the socioecological model. And uh, we, next slide, want to think about how do we develop interventions that target health behaviors related to obesity, but also account for social environment in particular. And also a big question is how do, can we design these interventions that promote health equity? Next slide, please. So our uh, work in the social determinants of obesity and cardiovascular risk laboratory at NIH really focuses on this relationship between social environment and cardiometabolic risk, where social environment can be thought of as not just socioeconomic uh, environment, but also perceptions of environment, as well as um, factors like crime and safety. Next, please. And uh, the foundation of our work is really focused on community engagement, um, where we work um, within communities to identify what health looks like, but also what interventions may work. Next, please. Epidemiologic studies help us to determine how we can extend the findings from our community engaged work. Next, please. But we really use systems uh, modeling and system science approaches to, again, account for the complexity of how uh, social environment and relates to obesity and other cardiovascular risk factors, but also really bridge the work between uh, the, the epidemiologic and community engaged work. Um, next slide. Next, please. To development of intervention. Next, please. And our work is really focused right now on uh, working in Washington, D.C., but Next, please. We can also think of this as working um, in other areas, other urban areas of the United States. Next, please. And so to take a, uh, get a sense of what we're doing around uh, community engagement. Next, please. We, our work is, foundation, is built upon uh, engaging communities through a, a community advisory board through the Cardiovascular Health and Obesity Collaborative in Washington, D.C. And this uh, uh, coming together of a multidisciplinary group of community leaders who are really focused on addressing cardiovascular health really allows us to get uh, input at each stage of, of uh, research project development and design. And our work started um, in Washington, D.C. with a health and needs assessment to, again, get uh, to identify what ways in which we might be able to not only understand health, but also address uh, cardiovascular health or intervention. Next, please. And so we focused on areas of Washington, D.C., where obesity was most prevalent in wards five, seven, and eight. Next, please. And we uh, used community engaged participatory uh, research principles where we gathered all the uh, data within the community at, at community sites. Next, please. Next. And really focused on both qualitative and quantitative methods to understand how environmental 
uh, and psychosocial factors related to cardiovascular risk and what intervention tools might be available to address uh, cardiovascular health within these communities. Next, please. And we identified uh, in particular how mobile health technology and mobile apps might be used in developing interventions. Next, please. And ultimately, next, please. We identified the feasibility of using these, uh, this mobile health technology in particularly developing a, a community-based physical activity intervention. But we also identified in particular crime and safety as barriers to both uh, physical activity and uh, sedentary behavior in the population. Next, please. And so this uh, led us to look at trying to extend these findings with epidemiologic work. Next, please where we uh, looked in, in collaboration with Dr. diaz Rue and her uh, group using the MESA data to look at both uh, social environment as measured by police reported crime, as well as individual level and neighborhood level um, um, safety. Next, please. Next. And ultimately how those related to the changes in adiposity um, in the MESA population. Next, please. And we were able to show that it really was uh, changes in uh, safety over time or greater uh, de uh, decrease in safety over time that were associated with increasing uh, adiposity without a clear relationship between uh, objective crime and adiposity. And this really pointed to perceptions around safety as a potential target for intervention. Next. And so again, with our community engaged work, next please. We were able to see crime and safety as barriers to physical activity, but even with the work with MESA and uh, looking at other epidemiologic studies, next please, there were mixed findings um, in linking crime to physical activity and obesity. And ultimately, uh, we wanted to identify uh, interventions that could again, increase physical activity and reduce obesity, but could account for um, issues around crime and safety. And that's where our system science approaches really came into, into play next. And so, next please. And so we focus mainly on utilizing agent-based modeling because as has been pointed out previously, it really allows for a simulation of how individuals within a community, within a population interact with each other, how they're able to um, interact autonomously, but also, next please, how they're able to, um, uh, next please, uh, interact with their environment and ultimately uh, engage with um, not only how, uh, they're, how they um, work with each other, but also how um, these, uh, these relationships affect the system as a whole and how changes in the environment may affect the system as a whole. Next, please. And so our first uh, work was focused on simulating using an agent-based model um, focused on wards five, seven, and eight of Washington, D.C. to simulate how uh, crime could impact physical activity and obesity among women um, in these areas, particularly African-American women. And we utilized uh, data from our community-based uh, um, assessment to validate the model and simulated about 80,000 households um, within these areas of Washington, D.C. Next, please. And so we showed in particular that as um, the likelihood of uh, an individual, an agent, um, their likelihood of, of exercising on any, any given day increased, um, the impact of both crime reduction and increasing um, availability of physical activity locations had a larger impact. And it really demonstrated the need for multi-level approaches to um, uh, re reduce crime in, in an effort to increase uh, leisure time physical activity and reduce obesity. And so we, one could think of uh, the type of intervention um, that would address this as something like urban renewal policies that could both uh, provide opportunities for uh, reduced crime, but also provide economic opportunities for um, individual level um, ability to engage in physical activity and potentially improve perceptions of safety within the environment. Next, please. 
And so one, when one thinks of urban renewal, we think of uh, potential processes around uh, things like gentrification, which may have negative consequences in promoting health equity. However, just to give an example of an urban renewal process that has an health equity focus, um, and this is a busy slide, but I want to give a sense of work that's actually going on in Ward 8 of Washington, D.C., where it's a community economic development plan that engages both, um, that really is built on the work uh, going on by individuals living in, and working in Ward 8, but also engages partners. Next, uh, please. Like us at... at um, at NIH who can help in understanding um, how community engagement might improve um, or be a part of urban renewal, uh, such as, for instance, next please, really bringing in uh, community-driven efforts to gather asset mapping through a, a process or an organization called Streetwise that can help in identifying ways in which community development can, um, it can community economic development can, can really focus on the needs of, of community members. Next, please. And so just to give a sense of where things may translate in with interventions, next, please. We, as a research group, we've thought about how, or we're working towards developing um, and utilizing an agent-based model that starts to test some of these multi-level interventions where we're looking at um, testing a mobile health uh, intervention that promotes physical activity, um, but also thinking about how can crime limit um, the utilization of this intervention. And it's actually sim simulating an uh, intervention that we're developing as a research team for the community. Next, please. And so I think just to, to conclude, we are really trying to develop interventions that fit within the um, getting to a health equity framework put forward by Dr. Kumanika, where right now we're focused on uh, uh, interventions around health behavior change and um, promotion of health behaviors. Next, please. But ultimately, our hope is that we can promote, we can see how these types of interventions synergize with um, economic development as well as um, efforts to reduce threats to personal safety and, and efforts to improve the built environment, um, ultimately with the goal of getting to cardiovascular health equity. Thank you very much. And 